SwiftUI has a dedicated picker type called date picker, which can be bound to a date property. And yes, Swift has a special type just for working with dates. And unsurprisingly, it's just called date. And so if we start with an at state property like this one here, at state private var wake up equals date dot now. That's the current date and time. We could then bind that to a date picker in our view body by saying date picker, please enter a date with selection bound to dollar wake up, like so. And I'm gonna run this back in the simulator so you can see exactly how it looks and works nice and big on the screen. So you'll see our title. You'll see I can press on this date area here choose various months or fold it out here and get a big sort of year spinning option. And then choose a time as well, AM or PM, depending on your locale. Now, you might think this looks ugly and try replacing it with code like this, date picker, empty string. But if you do that, you now have two problems. First, the date picker still makes space for the label to be on the left here, even though it's empty. And second, now users with screen readers such as VoiceOver won't have any idea what this date picker is trying to do. A better idea is to give a nice descriptive string for users, but if you want to hide it from the screen, you would say labels hidden as a modifier. And that still includes the original label, so screen readers know what it's for. It'll read out what it's for, but it's not visible on screen anymore. So the date picker, what we push to one side to make space for an empty text. Now, date pickers provide us with a variety of configuration options to control how they work. For example, we can say uh, displayed components to say what kind of options a user should, user should see on the screen. Um, if you don't care, you don't use it, you'll see day, hour, and minute. If you use dot date, you'll get month, day, and year. If you say dot hour and minute, you'll get just hour and minute. So you might say, for example, let's bind the same thing with displayed components being dot hour and minute. And now we get a much simpler version. There's no hour, uh, date anymore, just the hour field like that. Finally, there's an in parameter that works just the same way as we had with stepper. We can provide this thing with a date range to work from and the picker will ensure the user doesn't, doesn't select a date from outside that range. Now we've used ranges for a while now. We've done things like one through five or zero to 10, whatever. We can also use Swift dates with ranges. For example, we might say, I want to make some example dates here. Let's do uh, example dates as a method. I'll make a second date instance set to about one day in the future. So I'll say, let tomorrow is date dot now dot adding time interval 86,400. That is one day in seconds, give or take. Also you have, you know, daylight savings, time changes, da, da, da. that's about right. And now we can make a range from those two. I could say my range is between date dot now through to this time tomorrow inclusive. And that's really useful with date pickers because uh, Swift has something even better called a one-sided range, which is a range where we specify either the start or the end but not both, leaving Swift to infer the other side. For example, we could create our date picker like this. Display components, hour and minute. I uh, can just go away. Instead, I'm gonna say in date dot now dot dot dot. So start at now, run through to some unknown time in the future, a one-sided range. All future dates are allowed, but no past dates are allowed. So I can go and run it again. And this time I'll try and select, you know, yesterday. You'll see it's grayed out. I cannot go beyond the current time, which is amazing. So I can select any date from the future, but nothing before right now.